real estate brokerage office and she was like getting into you hard over email and I think even called and was rude. And she was really nasty. I was like, I got this. Oh, because I'm not, once somebody's mean to me, I am not. And I killed her with kindness. And by the end, she was like my best friend. Welcome to the LO Code Podcast, where we talk about everything from marketing to just general loan bullshit. Everybody, welcome to episode four of the LO Code podcast. Uh, today, we are talking about how to deliver five star service. Um, this should be your goal always. Awesome, this should always be your goal. Hey, that was a nice intro. I I know I did so good. I was a little bit nervous. Yeah, about it. you did good. <laughs> All right. So, five star service. This is the cornerstone of why we get a lot of referrals and a lot of oh, repeat yeah, business. A lot of referrals. And why we refinanced over, what, 80, 85, 90% of our past clients mm -hmm. without ever reaching out to them? Oh, yeah, we didn't. Aside from our regular mailers and stuff that we do, I send out Christmas cards and stuff. Um, our content is a huge part of that. Content but is a huge part of it. We're always in the service. Everything. They would not come back if the service wasn't good. Very true. Right? Yeah. So it's all based off of five star service. I'll give myself a little hand clap for that because it'd be great. Yeah. I work really hard. So let's go into what does five star service look like? How can people start implementing this into their process? So I think one of the easiest things that you can do is make sure that you are talking to your clients the way that you want to be talked to. So that's communicating in any aspect. Um, you know, if you're going to be delivering bad news. How would you want to receive that? You make Ryan do it. I have you made you do that in the past. Yeah. But it's like sometimes I get over emotional. I'll cry and you can't cry on the phone to your clients because that's just not awesome. Um, so I make him do it. Otherwise, I have I do collect myself and I will do it when I need to. Um, I like to just rip the band aid. He likes to rip the band aid. So how would you want to receive that news? I like the shit sandwich method where, you know, you've got the good news, bad news, good news. Hey, Mr. Borrower, good news, your appraisal came in. Unfortunately, it's 10000 less than it's supposed to be. These are your options. Everything else is going very well. Right. So, you know, definitely do it that way. So, that But do not hide them. from these conversations. They need to happen immediately when they're found out. Yes. When it's a big deal, it needs to happen immediately. If it's something that's just loan related, that we all Possibly know they're for bumps. another document that's going to piss them off like that. Is what but it like is. if we all have those small bumps in the roads on every loan, we mm -hmm. do not um, bug the borrower, scare the borrower, the realtor, unless it becomes an issue that can't be handled within, would you say, 48 hours? Yeah. Yeah. And if it's something that falls outside of that 48 hours, then we let them know. But it's one of these big things like an appraisal coming in. Don't wait two fucking days to tell someone that their appraisal is low. This needs to happen immediately. As soon as it happens, all parties need to be contacted. Yeah. And that so that everyone can be proactive. But this is like, this is what you should be doing all the time anyways. Like people should not take a day to get responded to ever. I've had, you know, it's not like I'm a baller with 50 people in my pipeline, but I've had 20, 30 at a time. And I do not, I will not take more than half an hour to an hour to respond. Even if it's, hey, I received your message. I'm not at my desk right now, but as soon as I get back, I will let you know. People just want to know that they were hurt. They want to be acknowledged. Yes. And that's huge. So communication. Communication is big. Whether it's good, bad, got to do it right away. Yep. Okay. And then we always have those pain in the ass clients or we have some really hairy file and it's really crazy. You need to properly, you know, to expectations. Set the expectations. Set the expectations well. And then even when people are being really rough, respond to them nicely and yes i've had some where you just want to like quit and walk away and i actually have but like always in the back of my mind is how can i make this really bad situation still turn out to where i get a five-star review and if i think about that before i react or act on it then how i react is going to be completely different and it's going to be better it's going to be more beneficial for the borrower i can remember a very distinct situation where we had the office manager at the uh, realty shop, the broker, the whatever she was. I don't know what office manager at the 
real estate brokerage office and she was like getting into you hard over email and I think even called and was rude. And she was really nasty. I was like, I got this. Oh, because I'm not, once somebody's mean to me, I am not. And I killed her with kindness. And by the end, she was like my best friend. Mm-hmm. And that that's that's what's always worked for me is just kill them with kindness and treat them the way that like you would want to be treated in the same situation. <laughs> that's the one where the borrower spent their down payment. And it was our fault. Yeah. 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 I remember that one. But I never point the blame. I never point the finger. I always just say, hey, here's the situation. I know it sucks. It sucks. Like I don't want to deal with it either. I totally get it. I mm-hmm. totally get it. But it is what we're dealing with now. So how can we smooth this over? What can we do so that everybody's happy in the end? Yeah, you're so good. Open-ended question. And then I make them answer to me. Sometimes they keep, they keep coming back mean. And then I just have to bring them back down. I totally get it. I to- On the inside, I'm fuming right now. I'm fucking pissed. But we got to get through this. You know, I try to make a little joke about things if I need to. And that's always worked really good. For me because i don't want to burn any bridges like you don't want people hating you you know we have reputation is everything yeah we have had to fire some agents because it just they won't allow us to do business the way that we do business and if it affects the way that we run our business we just can't work with them but that's a whole different story yeah let's so let's stay on track so now we have that covered what's the next thing um, so and I, this is one thing that I really love to do, answer questions before they're even asked. So mm. we, we've been in business long enough. I know what questions are going to be asked if I send out a loan estimate. So before I even send it out, you send an email or you send a loom, whatever the case is and say, Hey, um, your earnest deposit isn't on there. It will be once we get it. Um, you know, the, this fee, we haven't gotten titles fees from them. So this is an estimate once I get the real... All of those be type proactive. of things. Be proactive. And it will cut down on a ton of I work. I hate phone calls. I do everything in the planet to avoid phone calls. And this is my number one way. I rarely have questions about the loan estimate. I rarely have questions throughout the process because once I get through one step, I send an email. Hey, Mr. Borrower, this is what has happened. This is what I need from you. This is what we're doing next. There's no questions asked. Yes. And people love it. Be proactive it's so with streamlined. your communication. Um, next one, be patient. This one is one of the hardest ones um, for me because I like to go bing, bing, bing. But being patient and being on that same wavelength as your borrower, right. gets, it's just good service. If you were a server, you know, people are all crazy. You got to bring it down a notch. You have to be in control. So be patient. You're in control of what's going on. Right. And that's going to be huge for you. And I think it's like you you only ramp up the intensity as you need to. So if like you're asking yeah. for something, ask for it. And if you ask for it again, and then if you still don't have it, then you have to have some Oh, urgency. then I'll, yeah. So at that time, that's when I just make things up. Like, oh, if we don't get it by this date, we probably won't close on time. That really fires people up to do but what it's they very, need to do. But it's very true if, because if anything else falls out, yeah, if, you don't or if know. The, if the underwriter has an issue with one of those documents because yeah. you haven't been able to review it. So it's not really making something up. It's it's truth because you have no idea what's going to go down line. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. Um, like you said before, be upfront about everything. That's a really transparency is key. Transparency is key. I will say that's what most people, especially our realtor partners, <clears throat> say to us is like they know what they're going to get and yes. they know the timeline that things are going to happen. They know that they can get a hold of us. Mm-hmm. We answer our phone. We answer our emails. We don't hide. If things get tough, we do not hide. No. Nope. And I'll answer that phone call at eight o'clock at night. And they know we're partners. Yes. And the people we work for, like, we get so many thank yous. Of, thank you for working so hard on this. Yeah. A lot. Mm-hmm. Even before we've done any, any work. Well, that's another thing about being upfront. If you have, like, a sketchy deal, I will tell my borrower, hey, this is sketchy for X, Y, Z reason. It's going to be a little bit difficult than a normal loan process, but I'm here by your side throughout the whole thing, and we will get this done. It's just going to be, they're going to ask for a little bit more, you know, um, manual underwrites it's going to be a little bit more difficult than a regular loan but i got right. you we're, we're in this together and that's huge 
And if we bring that back to like even the beginning of the process when you're just talking to someone that's a prospect is setting the proper expectation and not wasting their or your time. 100%. You can answer basic questions, but then you always need to lead back, hey, to get you definite answers, we need an application, we need documents. It's the only way that I can truly serve you. Oh, yes. I will not issue, that's another thing about service, I will not issue a pre-qual letter without full documentation, credit pull. I go through every document. Your reputation's on the line. I every time you do a pre-approval. I pre-underwrite all of my files like because I do my own processing. I know how to do this. Exactly. And that is really important because they know that if I issue an approval, my realtors know that if I issue it's a pre-approval, gold. it's gold. Yep. And then there are no problems because you know what the problems are. Right. So that's a really big one. And then I think, I guess the other last key would be just above and beyond service. You know, when we send out a prequal. We break down a whole bunch of numbers. We, if you have this property, let us know. We'll get numbers back to you. And even if it's 15 properties and I want to pull my hair out, I'm absolutely going to be there when they need me to be there. You know, we send out a little home buyer guide uh, with, with that pre-approval. Um, and that answers a lot of those upfront questions. And the- there's softwares out there that yeah. will allow the realtors to write the pre the pre-approvals based on your parameters yeah the the client can write them and then they only have to contact you if it's outside of the parameters that you set for dti or, or whatever it is yep right so that's really cool um but yeah service like having the service is what keeps your reputation high it's what brings in the referrals it what mm-hmm. keeps your referral partners coming back it really is the base the cornerstone of your business yeah and if you don't have these practices down you're you're literally building a business on a house of cards Mm -hmm. and if you're not good at these things you need to hire somebody that is and one of the easiest things to do is i have templates in my email so Mm -hmm. i just throw the signature in and it i just i have highlighted the things that i would change like names and you know values for appraisals but i even go in detail on your appraisal has been ordered this is blah, blah 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 everything is detailed and then at closing um, you know, they get a hard copy from title of the closing package. I send them an electronic copy. It's like my final touch. We might not always have a phone call. You know, they miss it. They're busy. They're moving. Um, but, you know, I say here is uh, an electronic copy of your final executed documents. Here's also a first payment coupon. Your first payment is due this date. Um, you know, make sure that they have all of that information. That's when I also ask for a review. And it's just like that final above and beyond. And then I send a handwritten thank you card and a gift. And it is, it's extra work, but that extra work means that I don't have to spend money yeah. on advertising. And like your emails, like have the pictures and stuff. Oh yeah. We have, you know, our little fun, pictures. Our little fun jump clear to close. Paper says clear to close. I send that out, you know, to the borrowers and tag the, you know, the buying agent. And then yeah. I also send it out with, to the listing agent and buying agent saying, hey, thank you so much. Congratulations, we're clear to close. And everybody's like, oh my gosh, that's such a cute picture. You've been so amazing. And it's just- Do you use that picture for both realtors too? Yes, I do. That's perfect. <laughs> I'm glad you do. I do. And it's just these little things you know, mm-hmm. that really build up this. It's the brand. It's right. the brand. Yes, and I know that we harp on brand so much, but the brand, like people know- that our brand is synonymous with integrity service, and service and tra- yeah, transparency. So good quality, good rates, like everything. Yeah. Like that's what and it is. they know that we'll tell them also when they shouldn't do something. Oh, it's always about what is in the borrower's best interest. And that's something what to mention that? too, is we will be doing an upcoming podcast all about branding. So the more intricate details of that. So what we you, talked about today was just a prelude and like these are these are just the basics. Yes, this is just the basics. But it, um, Ryan always says it. But what questions do you have? Branding is like my jam. I branded the gym. We built a whole like our gym was badass, And I and I we just transferred that transferred knowledge the skills to mortgage. We kicked yep. ass in mortgage. I, I love it. I love building businesses. I love branding. It's my favorite thing. Yeah. If like you can't tell, good. I'm like really excited. What are your questions? What can we help you with? Go to the locode.com or what well, we're on Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. 
And on the website, you can find all the links to our social media. So it's just yeah. easy place to go and just click whatever your favorite is, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or and TikTok. And we're on there. Jessica Actually, Aylor, we don't have a TikTok Brian yet. We, we need to do one for this. Oh, we're, we're not on TikTok. No, not oh, for this. No, I'm not on TikTok. Mm, I yeah. hate TikTok. So what are your questions? Let us know how we can help. Go to the locode.com and we'll see you guys on the next episode.